I'm going to show you how to create a drawing inspired by Peter Bruegel's Tower of Babel. If you're new to my channel, please support me by liking this video and be sure to stick around and check out the other amazing art videos and art lessons on my channel, Rainbow Parrot Art. And please subscribe. Peter Bruegel was a Dutch painter who lived 500 years ago. He was born in the Netherlands in 1525 during the height of the European Renaissance. The European Renaissance was a time of rich cultural and artistic development throughout Europe. Peter Bruegel was known for his ability to realistically portray scenes from everyday life. His paintings have a strong narrative quality and often tell a story or express a particular perspective. The Tower of Babel is one of Bruegel's most famous paintings. It depicts the biblical story of the Tower of Babel. According to this story, a group of people became very arrogant and decided to build an enormous tower in order to show off and become big shots. But as a result of their arrogance, they were punished so that they became confused and could no longer understand each other's languages. And because they could no longer understand each other, their project failed and the tower was never completed and the people scattered. I love the detail in which Bruegel depicts this story. As I look at his painting, I feel as though I'm stepping into a different world. Bruegel was a prolific painter and created many other works of art during his lifetime. Today, he is remembered as one of the most important artists of the European Renaissance. Before we get started, I want to show you a few more depictions of the Tower of Babel to help you get ideas for how you might draw your tower. This is another painting of the Tower of Babel, also created by Peter Bruegel, and this painting was created by his son, Peter Bruegel the Younger. Here's an even older depiction of the Tower of Babel, painted in Germany a couple hundred years before Bruegel's time. I'm throwing in a few really simple drawings as well. Feel free to pause the video if you see an image you like and want to spend more time looking at. Okay, so I just finished planning my drawing and now I'm going to walk you through it step by step. I'm going to start by adding a wavy horizon line near the middle of my paper to indicate where the land ends and the sky begins. Over here on the right, I'm adding a line that indicates the edge of the seashore. I'm making the bottom edge of the tower convex. This means that the line is slightly round and bulges outward. Now I'm making two perfectly straight vertical lines on the sides. I'm adding another convex line, which will be the next level of the tower. Once again, I'm adding a vertical line on both sides. Again, the base of the next level begins with a convex double line and then adding a short vertical line on both sides. Notice that each successive level of the tower is slightly narrower than the level before it. This fourth level is where the tower starts to fall apart. I'm making it look a bit irregular here to indicate that the tower is not finished being built. I'm adding a few more levels on the left. Now over here on the right, I'm drawing the inner part of the tower, which is exposed because the outer part of the tower is not finished. I'm adding a few more lines, which will represent the uppermost levels of the tower. Now I'm drawing a simple stairway and a ladder. I'm adding windows and doors. I'm also adding straight vertical lines that divide the tower levels into sections. I'm continuing to draw doors, a variety of windows, and double vertical lines along the second level of the tower. And again, on the third level. Notice how some of my doors are wide and round, 
Some of them are pointy and some of them are tall and narrow. Try to challenge yourself to draw doors and windows in a variety of sizes, shapes, and styles. I'm going to add some details on the exposed inner structure of the tower. I'm adding some arched windows. I'm using vertical lines to divide this level into sections, then adding some narrow arched doorways. On this level, I'm using a double line for the arches to make them look a bit more decorative. And on this level, some small arches then some tiny windows at the top. It's time to add a few clouds in the sky. I'm adding another cloud right at the top of the tower to suggest that the tower goes all the way to the sky. This wavy line will be the starting point of a village. This cluster of rectangles is the front row of the village. I'm drawing some triangle rooftops then adding some more rectangle shapes behind the rooftops, then more triangle roofs, then another layer of houses. See how I keep working backwards to add additional houses? The farther away the houses get, the smaller they are. So my houses in the back are very tiny. Now I'm going to add some doors and windows to the houses. Over here on the right, I'm drawing a cluster of very tiny houses that are way off in the distance. I'm drawing a couple ships in the water. Watch closely to see how I draw these cubes. These are very large slabs of stones that are going to be used as building materials. Up here in the foreground, I'm drawing a group of people. I draw an oval for the head, some long hair, and then a simple boxy robe for the body. These people are small and out of focus, so I'm not going to worry about adding too many details. You notice they don't have any faces. I'm drawing more large stones on the ground. The stones look a bit chaotic and disorganized, which suggests that this building project is heading towards dysfunction and ultimately failure. And lastly, I'm drawing a few wavy bushes here in the foreground. Now that I'm done drawing, I'm going to add color. I'm using alcohol-based markers to throw down some medium blue at the top, which will gradually fade into a much lighter blue and then fade into white. I've outlined around the edge of my horizon line with a dark green. Then I'm blending it into a very light green. I've added some light turquoise and beige at the bottom. I'm filling in my tower using different shades of light beige, but you can use whatever colors you like. I'm using black to fill in the windows and doors. I'm using blue and green to color in the seawater. In order to make these stones look more three-dimensional, I'm using a different color to color in each side of the stones. Once you're all done adding color, I recommend taking an ultra fine Sharpie or a black colored pencil and outlining around the edge of the objects in your drawing to make them pop out. This will give your drawing a really nice finished look. I hope you love how your drawing turns out. Please support me by subscribing and be sure to check out all the other amazing art lessons and art tutorials on my channel, Rainbow Parrot Art.